the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because something is about to break open in your life. The day for rain has come. And like mighty showers, our lives are being flooded. restoration come to you grace is given to you at this hour hallelujah you are rising the strength of God in the ability of God and in the grace of God hallelujah wow it's another beautiful day here at the glory pavilion church where God's servant Reverend Dr. Efe Oboke is bringing God's word to you. Hallelujah. Everywhere, everywhere you are all over the world, I'd like you to know that in this house, we are committed to bringing the undiluted word of God to you. I'd like to get your family members together, your friends, everyone, and let's go on this journey with this amazing servant of God. Last week, he commenced uh, teaching on the subject, the power of circumcision. And today, he's going to do the second part. But before we go on, I'd like to ask you, what exactly is circumcision? You know, in some instance, circumcision simply talks about a passage, a rite of passage. And I'd like you to know that every child of God that will rise up, to the height of God's call must undergo circumcision. I'd like to read you a scripture from Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi 1 verse 6. He says, A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If you must rise up with God, you must honor God by surrendering yourself for the process of circumcision. Circumcision will put power in your hands to function in the realms of sons. And God is calling you today to rise up to that realm in this day that we are in. If you are here, I'd like to bow your heads. So we just say words of prayer, a word of prayer as we bring on God's servant and the amazing Numa praise. I'd like to say to yourself this day, say, Lord, I come before you. I surrender my will to you. Because I know that there will be no work of circumcision in me if I am not surrendered. So therefore, I surrender to you. Take hold of me. Mold me the way you want. Lead me in the path that I should go. Such that at the end of it all, I will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And people of God say, Amen. I like to open yourself as you receive that message today as we welcome the amazing new my praise hallelujah amen. amen 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 jesus is in the house our lord and master is in the house so what best can we give them to worship oh we give you praise jesus lift up your hands to adonai the sovereign lord Oh, we worship you, our King. We give you praise. Lift your voice and say,
Jesus, hallelujah. Adonai, Lord and Master, Adonai. Jesus was very particular when he spoke to the disciples that they must receive the Holy Spirit. He said that because he meant for every believer to have a supernatural life. With the presence of the Holy Ghost, that supernatural life is possible. And this is why the school of the Spirit that we organize is a training ground for everyone to know how to function in the Spirit. I want to invite you because once more, we're having the School of the Spirit program come up again. It's going to be June 27th all the way to July 8th this year, 2022. I'd like to invite you to be part of that school. You can find out more about this and register. If you go online, go to our Facebook page and see A Date with Destiny, GPC. If you go there, you'll find the link that will enable you to register. So I hope to see you this year. School of the Spirit, it is time to experience the glory of God. Hello there, it's a joy again to be here to share God's word and uh, today we're going to continue from where we stopped off last week. Last week we introduced the subject of the power of circumcision and uh, we're looking at the fact that God is in covenant with humanity. So looking at man's history, uh, right from the Garden of Eden when Adam actually sinned, I shared with you last week that when man sinned, that act of obedience to Satan place Satan directly as now authority over him. And that's why today in our world, if you look around you today, there's so much of everything that shows that it is not God that is in control. You see disease, poverty, failure, frustrations, oppression of all sorts, violence, wars, all kinds of calamities that go on around us. All these show that Satan today dominates mankind. So man was plunged into darkness because of that sin. And Bible says that death began to reign as a king over humanity. Now God did not change his plans for man. He didn't change what he wanted. But God needed to do it legally and properly. And so what God now began to do was to search for a man. Because man is the legal person on this earth. God, if he came into this world, it would be illegal. Satan is here because man allowed him to come into dominion. So God had to find a way to come back into the affairs of man. So here, we see that God began to search for a man. A man who will have the strength, the courage, the determination, the right attitude to allow him be a covenant partner with God. And over the ages, God began to seek for such a man until he found in that person called Abraham the kind of man that he wanted. So Abraham was the man that God found. He looked at him, tested him, gave him conditions which he met, and then God now made it clear that now I can trust you with my son. Now you can be the door to humanity. When God began to talk to Abraham, he made it very clear that he's coming into a covenant relationship. What God instituted with Abraham was a relationship, a covenant relationship. And I said last week that covenants are very deep. They are not emotionally done. They are done because of what is at stake. And every covenant opens doors to blessings. And unfortunately, there are consequences when they are broken. So God caught a covenant with Abraham. And once more, it meant that heaven had access to humanity. And also on the side of man, it meant also that man could not access the provisions of God and the protection of God. So this was the perfect thing. God spoke to Abraham and said to him, he said, look, in you, all humanity will be blessed. So God was not just trying to bless Abraham. No, God's interest was in reclaiming humanity again. But he needed a door, a door into this earth that would be legal, that cannot be contested in any court of justice. Abraham willfully entered into agreement with God and caught that covenant. And when the deal was sealed, once more, Jehovah can now arise on the scene in the lives of humanity. But... In sealing this deal, like I said, every covenant, at the end of the covenant, there must be a token. Something that is put in place that represents a covenant. In our world today, 
an easy covenant we can relate with is marriage, for example. And even though the two people involved are in love, they pledge to one another their loyalties and want to be husband and wife, at the end of the process, tokens are always exchanged by the parties. Most cases in marriage, rings will be exchanged. I have a ring today, I'm married. And anywhere you run into a person that wears a ring similar to this one, you know the person is in covenant with somebody else. And that they are married. And it's a legal thing. And it establishes that there are responsibilities that must not go along with it. So covenants are serious businesses that we enter into. So God entered into covenant with humanity, Abraham. And that was a major turning point for humanity. Man had been lost. Man was in bondage. We are told in the book of Romans that death reigned over man. Satan at will inflicted man. Punished man for what man didn't know anything about. So we see here that God in his mercy was able to get access to that door. And the door was Abraham in that covenant relationship. So at the end of the deal, what God did was to establish that this agreement that we have entered into Abraham there's going to be a token of this deal that we have. And that day, God said, you will cut the first skin of your flesh. That act, circumcision, that will be the token of this particular covenant that we have. Now, I wonder, you know, because in my mind, I'm wondering, why will God, at the end of the day, choose something that is so touchy, sensitive, painful, to be a token of a covenant because with covenants there's no specific thing that must be the token what is important is that the parties agree that this covenant let such be the token what we both agree on to represent this union it could be anything like in marriage for example now people exchange rings but i also know people that don't like rings some people exchange bibles they exchange different things as long as something is chosen that is recognized, respected by both parties as a representation of the covenant, then it's acceptable. Judas entered into a covenant with people to betray Christ. At the end of the arrangement, they all agreed that a kiss on Jesus would be the token of the covenant. So covenants can carry any token. But when God was choosing the most important covenant of all, the covenant that will bring liberation to humanity and bring freedom. Man will gain access to his power and he will gain access to man that was lost. God says, this will be the token of that covenant. You must cut the foreskin of your flesh. And like I said, I've always wondered, why would God choose something like that? It's a painful thing, sensitive, touchy. People bleed when it is done. Why would God go for that? And for many years, I kept pondering over this. And then it dawned on me that the first thing is that God was establishing that if you are going to participate in his covenant, it requires determination. It requires full commitment. Your eyes must be open, it's deliberate, and you are ready to go all the way. Humanity was at stake here. And it is not something that can be done in a casual manner. Something serious must represent it. And God chose this touchy, painful means of establishing the covenant. People of God, I'd like you to know that God's power is available to humanity today. Because the covenant is alive and real. When God opened the door in Abraham, his intent, like I said, was the salvation of humanity. So a covenant with Abraham was paving the way. For the true covenant that God was having in mind to be fully established. Because Jesus ultimately was coming to bring the new covenant that will embrace the salvation of humanity. So this covenant with Abraham was a doorway to the real covenant that God saw ahead of time. That God prophesied in the Garden of Eden. That God saw that would bring complete deliverance from the clutches of Satan. That dominion of death, that exercise of disease, poverty, and failure, 
that humanity has become conversant with, God was opening the door through covenant to make it happen. But this initial covenant, the token, was circumcision of the flesh. And unless it is done, man will not have access to this covenant. I shared with you last week that Moses violated this. And death almost gripped him. Even though he was chosen to be Messiah. It's not who you are. It's not how loud you talk. It's not what you do that makes it happen. It is the strength of the covenant in your life that guarantees the power of God. And that is why the token must be in place. And in this particular case, non-negotiable, it is the cutting of the foreskin. That was the symbol that God chose to be the representation of this covenant that he had with humanity. And thank God that Abraham had the courage. Many folks, I don't know if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't have backed out. I can imagine at my age, somebody comes and says, look, go cut your foreskin. I'm not sure I would not think twice about that. But thank God that my name is not Abraham, I'm a Feobuke. So, Abraham, God chose, he was the right man. At that old age, he knew that he was going to do that. He loved God so much. No wonder we're told in scriptures that at a point when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he turned to his entourage and said, no, I can't do this without consulting my friend on this earth. Abraham had earned that place. Abraham gave all to God. It didn't matter what was required by God. God chose, give me your son. Abraham parted with his son. God said, cut the first skin of your flesh. Abraham was ready for that. He circumcised himself, his entire household, because he was in love with God. And through that act, he paved the door for humanity. Now, I want us to look further at this token of, of uh, the covenant. Why did God choose the cotton of the first skin as a token here? Like I said, the first thing here was that God needed full commitment by man. If you want to see the power of God in your life, it will require full commitment. No make no mistake about that. One reason why we see very insipid Christians, people that are walking in bondage, lack of victory, is because many are not fully committed. They want the power, but not the means to the power. And that never works with the covenant of God. Now, I want to show you a text that will help us appreciate what God is doing here. Now, if you go to Colossians, Chapter 2, one verse of scripture, it says here, it says, um, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. Let's go to the next verse, verse 17. It says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. What is going on here? If you read the Old Testament, you will discover that God initiated a lot of procedures. For example, the Sabbath day was a day in the week that God said nobody should walk. It should be regarded with respect and it's a day of rest. So in the Old Testament, God chose a lot of symbols like that to represent acts of worship to him or of walking with him. Now here, Paul is revealing that all those requirements that we see in the Old Testament, special moons, special times, uh, like the Sabbath day and all of that, that all those things that God did were simply a shadow of things to come. That the real body of those things is what was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So what is happening here is that all the acts of God, like even the killing of animals, a sacrifice, all those things were symbols of the real. Because today we don't need to kill animals. Jesus is the true sacrifice. He's the fulfillment of of all the requirements that were given in the Old Testament. So we now look back and see that all those laws that God instituted, the fulfillment today is in Christ Jesus. And so in the same token, like I said, God cut a covenant with Abraham. And he said, the token of this covenant is that you must cut the foreskin of your flesh. Now that act by God, the fulfillment of it today is in Christ. Today, we are no longer required to cut the first skin of our flesh in order for us to be in covenant with God. If you cut the first skin of your flesh, you can do it for hygiene or for your culture or whatever reason you have. But certainly, it is not an act of worship to God. And it will certainly not initiate any covenant with God. It has no value in terms of covenant. But what God was doing is this. 
he was showing us, number one, that if you want to be in covenant with him, it will require full commitment. You cannot go half-half. And number two, the requirement for being in covenant with him will be painful to you. And it will mean cutting your flesh. I want to show you this. Let's go to the book of Galatians 5. We need to understand this. Verse 17. Galatians 5, 17. Look at this. He says, in the NIV, I read, he says, he says, for this sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. Can you see that? In other words, man has a nature that has come out of sin. And Paul is saying here that that nature has a desire. He has a propensity. He has a direction. He has a will. It would drive you. And he says, unfortunately, what it wants is contrary to the spirit. It will never make you spiritual. And remember that God is a spirit. All his blessings are where? In the spirit. That's where they start from. Your flesh will never take you there. It desires the opposite. So he says that the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit has a will, has a direction. And what it desires as well is also contrary to the sinful nature. What the King James calls the flesh. Completely contrary. These are two opposites. Two directions. If you are in one, you can't be in the other. And unfortunately, both are strong. Driving us. When we talk about the flesh, we're talking about your pride. Your pride. Your lust and desires. Propensities of the flesh. Tendency to gossip. Malice. Unforgiveness. Murders. Violence. Fornication. Adultery. All of these things. They are all pools of that nature. And God knows that a day will come, there will be a true covenant that will bring life to humanity. And when that day comes, only people that are determined will walk in it. Only people who know how to circumcise their flesh will be able to live in that realm. The reason why many believers today cannot walk in victory, this is it. We can watch a soap opera for four hours. We can't pray for five minutes. We can read all manner of gossip material, but we cannot read our Bibles for five minutes in a week. All of these are things that must be caught. Remember, dealing with the flesh means cutting. So even though God has removed circumcision today in Christ Jesus, the requirements are no less. It will involve cutting your flesh. You want to be spiritual. You want to walk in the blessings of God. You want to see the grace of God, his power in your life. It will involve you cutting, cutting the flesh. So as far back as Abraham, God began to demonstrate that. That this is the way for the covenant. We must make up our minds, make our choices. Make our choices. It says, it's in nature. The direction is contrary to the way of the spirit. The Bible says if you sow to your flesh, of your flesh you will reap corruption. But if you want life, you must sow to the spirit. Let me show you this text. Philippians chapter 3. One verse of scripture, verse 3 as well. Look at what Paul now says. He now says, look, it's no longer cutting your skin. No. He says, we are not the circumcision that worship God. In other words, it's your life you must circumcise. Your life. We are now the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. You see that? In the spirit. So, New Testament circumcision is bringing yourself out of the flesh into living in the spirit. That is the cotton. And many times, our flesh will cringe. Our pride will be wounded. But I tell you something, it's the way of life. The covenant of God is real. Jesus paid the price. The covenant is there. We can be healed. We can be restored. We can walk in the grace and the power of God. But it says that we must be the circumcision. We must be. We can't remove circumcision 
from walking in the power of God. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice. Our joy only is in Christ Jesus. And we have what? No confidence in the flesh. We don't trust in the flesh. We don't live in the flesh. We don't pursue the flesh. How can you be a believer? You're working on forgiveness. You keep malice. You don't greet somebody for three days, one week. No, 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 no. You need to circumcise your flesh. The way of life is before us. Jesus paid it all. And God is inviting us today to walk in the power of circumcision. It's critical. I want to show you this scripture. Book of Romans chapter 2. And uh, see these two verses. Verse 28 and 29. Bible says, see in the Old Testament, the Jews were those that were circumcised. Sons of Jacob. Remember, that even Abraham was not a Jew. Abraham was not a Jew. Isaac was not a Jew. But the token of circumcision was what marked out every Jew. Now look at this text. It says, for he's a Jew. He's not a Jew which is one outwardly. What makes you a Jew, a child of God in that era? It's an outward thing. You cut the foreskin of your flesh. He's not a Jew that is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. The real circumcision now is not the one that is caught in the flesh. Look at the next verse. Next verse says, but he's a Jew which is now one inwardly. Somebody who has gone into his life. And circumcision now is in the heart. Getting your heart right. Fixing your heart. So circumcision that God regards today is in the heart. In the spirit, not of the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. God still requires circumcision, but it's of the heart today. I'd like you to know that God has placed his covenant for us. His power is there. Transforming power. God had always seen man free, right from the Garden of Eden. And today he has opened the way in Christ Jesus by bringing the New Testament, the New Covenant. The requirement is still the same, circumcision. And when you do that, remember that Abraham had to do circumcision himself. God cannot circumcise you. He can tell you to be circumcised, but that is what you bring to the table. You have to deal with yourself. And the Bible says, true circumcision is of the heart. And thank God, in the spirit there's life. We must worship God from our spirits. Lord, I thank you today. Right where you are, make a consecration to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to live for you. I want to walk in the power of this new covenant. I present my life to you, to full obedience in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Somebody watching me right now here in the spirit, you have had these persistent headaches. You're a woman. I actually see you. You've had these persistent headaches troubling you. They sound to me like migraine. But I hear the Lord say that behind what you are facing is a place of bitterness and anger against someone who has hurt your feelings. I know that God is speaking to you today because it's not time for you to let go. See, the power of God is all around you right now. And God wants to fix your life. Today, I rebuke that condition from you in the name of Jesus. From your heart, begin to release that person and say, Father God, I forgive that person. I let it go. That bitterness, that anger that's consumed me for so long. Let it go right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody listening to me right now. You're in the process of buying a property. You have been so on. You have been so you are in that place where you are so uptight about because it's not seemingly there's been one disappointment after another as you've been pursuing trying to do this today i release help to come your way in the name of jesus you've been trying to buy that property that that that, that uh, property that you've been pursuing from your heart meeting that brick wall today god is stepping in in the name of jesus i release favor to you in the name of jesus i release help to you oh god everything frustrating that dear person i command to leave now in the name of jesus oh yes 
It's a new day for God's people. Help is coming your way because the covenant is real. I speak healing to your body. I speak healing to your family. I speak healing to your business. In the name of Jesus, I bless you today. The covenant is activated in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. People of God, let's rejoice. Our God is alive. We have a covenant with him in Jesus' name. Well, perhaps you've never really surrendered your life to Jesus. You are not listening to me by accident. God is reaching out to you this day. I'd like to pray with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I want to embrace this new covenant. So forgive me of all my sins and all wrongdoings. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I declare Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Make me your child today, Father. I receive your blessing and I come into the covenant community in the name of Jesus. Oh, what a joy. When a man prays, this simple prayer in faith, the power of God actually goes into their lives. Somebody watching me right now, hear the Holy Ghost say, you have this problem in your spine. If you bend, you feel excruciating pains. Oh, in the name of Jesus, right where you are right now, stand to your feet right now. I command you to be healed right in the name of Jesus. That back condition leaves you right now in Jesus' name. I curse the root of these things. I speak to your ligaments, your tendons, every component. Be healed in the name of Jesus and be free. Bend right now. You are healed in the name of Jesus. That pain is gone and you are healed. Turn every way. Bend over right now. The power of God is upon you in the name of... Wow, our God is alive. I feel his power all over me right now. Be healed in your body in the name of Jesus. The Lord prosper you. The covenant guarantees your freedom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What a joy to know God and to serve him. I bless you in Jesus' name. Well, this Sunday, look at the address on your screen. I want to invite you. Come join us in worship. Amazing things are happening. We're hearing mind-boggling testimonies of God's favor and God's goodness. Join us this Sunday and let's worship God together. I will expect to see you there. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Thank God for his covenant. Amen. Well, at this time, I want to pray for anyone who's paid their tithe. You give an offering. You're supporting this world by giving to us financially. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. All resources and promotion come from you. I bless the giver and I speak heaven's help in your life. Favor goes with you. The Lord give rain to your land, make you watered and fruitful in the name of Jesus. I bless the work of your hands and I command you to prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we've been looking at the power of circumcision. You know this now that if you keep your side of the bargain, the resources of God are at your disposal. Walk in freedom, walk in triumph, enjoy the blessing of the covenant. You are special to God. God bless you.